Well, schools aren't just for teaching math, reading, or science, and to be honest, they haven't been for a long time. But now they're also teaching kids to feel ashamed of their families. 158th graders at Badger Middle School in West Bend, Wisconsin, were recently given a privilege test that identified them as being privileged for being white or rich or having an intact family. This is common, by the way, in schools across the country. The school officials at Badger Middle School said that privilege education was important to enable the students to succeed in their careers somehow. Nell Daly is a psychotherapist and she joins us tonight. Now, thanks for coming on. This strikes me, and I've seen this before, I've seen it with my own kids, it seems um, cruel. Children are, as you know, very sensitive about being called out as different. And that's exactly what this does. And it singles out some kids and basically suggests that they're bad for things they can't control. Why would they do this to children? Well, I would have to respectfully disagree with you here. This, to, to just to, as a journalist, let's just put this into context. They gave this test in an English class after the students read To Kill a Mockingbird. And what they were doing was discussing Jim Crow laws. So it's very difficult for teachers to teach history, U.S. history and world history, without talking about privilege and how positions of privilege, when they're abused, can lead to really horrible crimes being committed to humanity. But I'm, I'm confused. So these are middle schoolers in Wisconsin in 2018. To Kill a Mockingbird is about Mississippi in the 1940s. What do their families have to do with that? Like, literally nothing. It wasn't their families. What they were talking about is whether or not kids recognize what kind of privilege they have in the society by being who they are. For example, perhaps white, perhaps male. And it's teaching children that they need to have compassion for people who are on the other side of whatever they are and to also not abuse that position of privilege moving forward in their lives. Oh, so they're scolding the kids for things they can't control, like their race or the condition of their family. I mean, I by the way, I isn't believe, this... I don't, I don't believe anybody was actually scolded. And in but fact, no, but, but the, the student... implication is, the implication is, look, you have a special responsibility to be sensitive because of something you can't control. And by the way, Absolutely. you really and Tucker, have... Tucker, if we didn't teach children this at this point, right, then we're going to raise little boys who end up becoming producers and executives at large movie studios oh. who then end up committing crimes against women like rape. Right. We need to okay, teach so children how to be really compassionate towards other people and to be much more sensitive to not abusing how their positions is this, of power. How is this compassionate to single out little kids? They're not and little to make kids. So they're in fairness, middle schoolers. these children, no, they're middle schoolers. So by the time the children are in the eighth oh, but grade. But hold on, how is it compassionate to make them feel bad for their race or their family situation? This does make them feel bad. I've had it, it's Tucker, happened to my kids. Tucker, this is, talking about shame and vulnerability is a crucial part of the classroom. And, the, and the, it's interesting. Oh, it is. What the parents, yes, because what the parents were saying was that. Are the teachers qualified to do this? Uh, I mean, are they. You've, sit, you've sat through U.S. history classes. You've sat through world history classes. Yeah, it's very, and I, as, as, I mean, I think it's one thing. Hold on. I, I'm not sure that being a middle school history teacher gives you, first of all, the right to talk to my kids about their family and to make judgments about their family, A. B, are they really qualified to navigate something this delicate with does a, a, I think, I a think bachelor's degree in history give you the ability to do this to tackle the nuances here um effectively I, i'm not sure i'm not convinced as, as, as a psychotherapist i read the actual survey and some of the questions i agree with you were a bit bizarre and i didn't understand them but asking children to recognize where they hold positions of power because of their race or their gender is really important and it's very difficult for teachers okay, no to i, I not would correct you by saying up. it's really stupid actually because the the idea that all people of one race are empowered and people of another race are disempowered is, first of you're all, factually this, you're wrong. You're making this binary. This is a very nuanced conversation. Oh, well, I'm not making it binary. And when you, the and when you talk about it, when you talk about when you, this test when, when you talk about the Civil War, when you talk about uh, World War II, how do you talk about those kind of world history events where many, many people were killed, where built, blood was actually spilled because of race, because of because of politics? You can't not bring this stuff up with, with kids in a classroom. Right. But, and I'm not suggesting that you don't bring it up. That's not at all what I'm but saying. That's what the teachers what are I'm, doing. What the teachers no, no, were no. Hoping... Well, hold on. Slow down. What I'm saying is that you shouldn't say to kids that somehow you're implicated in it. The Civil War took place 150 years no, ago. The, the, it has nothing survey... to do with the kids at Badger Middle School in Wisconsin. No, that's not what the survey was saying. The survey was saying, do you recognize 
where you hold a position of power. And the thing that's interesting mm. is what gets what gets so, triggered. But, but this the is hold on. This is subjective. This is totally subjective. I mean, I could say in certain. I mean, let's be totally real here. It's not always true that the white guy is the most powerful person in every situation. That's a gross generalization, no, actually. I, I agree with you, but let's just say, for example, that men still make more money than women across many, many industries in this country. Uh -huh. That's a position of power because you're a male in this society. And it's true if we look at... It's just not actually true, though. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm not faulting you. I know you're a shrink, not an <laughs> economist, but you may not be keeping current with the actual numbers on this. That's not actually the whole story, but that's a whole another conversation. I'm just saying, why is it not okay just to have teachers teach history in English and math we're turning out generations of total of illiterates why wouldn't we stick to those things well you have to teach history you also have to teach the, what why these things occurred in, in US history and part okay. of that is an emotional conversation you cannot talk about the Civil War Jim Crow laws okay. without it becoming emotional yeah I'm apparently sorry. not I can Nell thank you right. great to see you